Hey YouTube, Alan here with another response to EdT1138's latest Top 3 Tuesday. And this week's question, an absolutely excellent question, was provided by OKChief420. And he asked, what is your top three favourite uh, handheld games? And it could be any handheld game at all, pretty much. There was no restriction. But of course, when you go handheld, you can't help but think of Nintendo. So there's a fair bit of Nintendo in this. Which is a little of a break from the norm, given that I tend to be quite Sega focused these days. <clears throat> and speaking of Sega focused, I loved OK Chief's um, number one pick. It was a Tiger uh, Sonic 2 kind of LCD game and watch type of thing. I've seen them all around the playgrounds when I was young as well. A very, very nostalgic retro pick. Maybe not the best game in the world in terms of gameplay, but I can totally understand why you go for it. Okay, on to my picks then. So. For me, um, I was actually surprised when I thought about this. Really, I was expecting older stuff to come to mind, but it was it was actually more newer stuff. And in number three, I went with something that kind of embodies the Nintendo DS to me. And that is um, Elite Beat Agents. Now, I have this box, somewhere, but I can only find a loose cartridge in my kind of game pouch. So, Elite Beat Agents. It's basically a rhythm game tap the, you know, the notes on screen as they occur, sometimes slide and spin, things like that. You know, you progress through the game, you're basically this cheer squad type of thing, you know, and trying to help people along in, in these kind of stories that go up on the top screen of the DS, and it's all basically about interacting and keeping time to the, to the music. Um, great fun, makes great use of the technology, the, you know, the two views and the touch screen and whatnot, and it's really just a great example of a rhythm game and a great way to kind of to, a great, something that's great to play on a handheld you can pick it up play it for three minutes and have great fun or you can sit down for an hour and bloody you know play it play it play it you know for, for going back for high scores and going through the whole story i played the hell out of this actually i imported this from the us it's got one of the very few games that won't come out on camera but it's ntr a0 se usa because for a long time it didn't look like they were going to release this in europe so I said screw it, imported the US version and I was um, doing a college write up at the time and <laughs> I just said I'll try out one level, you know, this is when the, when the package arrived in and pretty much <laughs> that was the day gone, I just kept playing the damn thing. It was great and pretty much signalled at the time, you know, a reconfirmed how much I loved the DS, it's a great system. And that ties in to my number two pick and it is Tetris on the DS. Now, I could actually nearly say Tetris on the Game Boy, which um, Ninja Bear Hook very kindly sent me over very recently, because basically they're both classics. And hey, look how small they got. Digi. Um, but Tetris DS really refines it, and I'm actually a lot better at this. This one is kicking my ass. <laughs> so Tetris DS, like a boatload of game modes. It's got a whole Nintendo team. Each mode is themed after a different Nintendo game, so you got Mario, Zelda, Metroid, so on. Um, and they kind of actually do try and change up the Tetris formula. Now the best mode is still the basic Mario Tetris mode as they call it. And you go for the 100,000, 200,000, clear 100 lines or clear 200 lines, I can't quite remember. Superb. I mean, what's there to say about Tetris that people don't know? It is almost the quintessential handheld game and one of the greatest games of all time, period. So number one. Um, now this is actually not going to be the DS game, DS game, but I will include a DS uh, version because these games stretch, you know, basically stretch from the Game Boy all the way up to the DS and the 3DS shortly, I'm sure as well, and they're synonymous with Nintendo and with handhelds and really reinvigorating the Game Boy because Tetris it kind of launched the Game Boy off into this massive, you know, sales superstar, but after a few years, I mean, the iterations like pocket had come out but sales were tapering away and then one game came out that basically reignited the whole thing and turned the system into a monster all over again and of course when you say something like that it can only be Pokemon now ordinarily I'm not a massive RPG guy I just don't have the time don't have the inclination don't necessarily even like reading and when I say DS of course we have you know modern iterations Pokemon Diamond but if I pick one, because there's loads of them, Mystery Dungeon, other spin-offs, I'm going to just go with Pokemon Red, or Fire Red, as I happen to have here. Their very first Pokemon, an absolutely great game. 
if you strip away all the you know the merchandising and all the crap that kind of followed and just boil it down to to what it was just play the game and okay RPGs aren't for everyone understandable turn-based battles can turn people off too but these are very addictive games very clever to kind of work in the whole gotta catch them all mechanism trading with other people making great use of the link cable kind of like Tetris did actually because of course you could play the two player in Tetris so you know it was another great link play example on a handheld you know fostered communication too and it was just great fun to train up your team and you know go through the whole world and it was and it felt like a massive world on a tiny tiny cartridge all these 150 different you know monsters to try and find and to catch and this massive land to explore with different eight gyms and you know how did they fish it onto a tiny, tiny little Game Boy cartridge, which is only a few meg in size? It's you know a testament to to great programming design and you know implementation. But yeah, superb games, and obviously I'll, you know could be probably told if old Snorlax is a picture. He's my favorite guy from them. Pokemon. I don't really follow the too many of them anymore. I get the odd one. I mean. Haven't played any of the black and white versions one or two or anything like that, um, but every, every so often even I can jump back in and play one of them because they don't really change. That's perhaps the flaw, but they're kind of comfortable in that way. You you can still pick them up and same mechanics and still appealing in the same way too. So flip the coin, but because I feel that I kind of reignited um, the Game Boy and handheld games in general. And also for me, it was actually the game that really got me playing handheld games. I had a Game Boy before, had Super Mario Land, and I enjoyed it, but it wasn't something I would always be on a console. But Pokemon actually got me to put significant time into a handheld, over 100 hours. So that made it my number one pick. Tetris was pushing it though, I have to say. So, quick recap. Of course, we have Elite Beat Agents, something a little different. Evergreen Tetris, and the kind of system-defining Pokemon. Actually, I guess Tetris is system-defining too. So, there's my three um, handheld games. Really small little props today, tiny little things. Thanks to AT1138 um, for another great top three Tuesday and to OKHE420, um, really cool question. I'm surprised no one asked that before, actually. When, he, when I see the question, I was like, yeah, that, that's a great question. So, and thanks to everyone else for watching. Hope you enjoyed and hope to see you soon with another video. Bye for now.